while um, Stockholm is asleep, space enthusiasts gather here to talk about what they love most. And I'm going to talk about the missed student satellite, and I've entitled uh, this talk the A No-Nonsense Approach to Learning About System Engineering. That doesn't mean there's a nonsense approach, but I just mean that it's, there's, this is a no-nonsense approach. So, um, and uh, well, I'm a retired space engineer as doing this uh, to, um, to have fun in my retirement years. Um, so let's see if this works, yes. So let's start, uh, what is system engineering? This is a term that is bandied around a lot. Uh, you hear it all the time, and people put a lot of different meanings into it. I'm just using my very simple way of defining it. So let's look at some bullet points. First of all, a system, as sort of obvious, it's a interdependent elements for a common objective. That's a system. That's pretty s straightforward. An engineer. Oh, what's an engineer? Well, that's somebody who applies science to make new devices to serve a useful purpose. Mm, yeah, sort of obvious too, isn't it? Um, of course, an engineer is a hero, but that's another question. <laughs> uh, a systems engineer is one whose new devices are systems. Oh, yeah. So here's a new... Now, all, all of a sudden, we are sort of going up the ladder. So... System engineering, that is envisaging a problem from a general rather than a specialized point of view. What you're taught normally in, in engineering school is to concentrate on a very narrow subject and, a, a, and a, a, some piece part of a larger en entity. So, but, but in system engineering, you're trying to look at the, uh, at the, from, a, from a general point of view. So... But the interesting thing with system engineering, it is satisfies the need of a customer. So now we introduce the idea of a customer or a user, uh, an end user, which means that that is the focus that the system engineer has all the time through his or her work, is the, the, the requirement of the end user. It's not a sort of um, general... It's just, we're not doing it for fun, we're doing it for a certain purpose. I stole this from a, a classical book, Skolnik's Introduction to Radar System. It's a classic, I recommend reading it if you love a lot of radar antennas and stuff. But any, anyway, so I think that system engineering, that is taught as a theoretical subject here at KTH. But I think that we, it needs to be learned in practice, and that is the purpose of, of MIST. So I, I'm making a distinction between teaching and learning here. No, please note that. So, uh, MIST is a CubeSat. It's a standard three-unit CubeSat that weighs four kilograms, and it has, of course, uh, a, a body, which is three liters big, subsystems in the middle, and they're actually experiment, technical and uh, scientific experiments on top and bottom. Uh, in, in real life, there will be solar panels uh, on all sides except here. So, we will the schedule of this is f you know, roughly... Um, four, to, four to five years, we'll see when we get, get to the launch stage. Um, so this is the, the, the sort of obj object that we're working on to, to learn about system engineering. So the students contribute to this project by taking project courses where they get credits. They can do their bachelor's or master thesis. And they can also volunteer, and um, about one-third of the, of the students working on MIST are, are volunt volunteers. That is, they do it for fun and not for credits. And there's a new student, student team each semester, which is, of course, a problem with continuity. There are some students that continue from one semester to the other, which helps a lot in transferring knowledge. And uh, there's a student team leader that manages the day-to-day -day work of the students. And there's roughly six sub-teams that each have one, uh, one supervisor. You just met one, the previous speaker is one of the supervisors. Go now. So that's how it works. I don't consume much time, do I? <laughs> or I have to slow down a bit. <laughs> okay, so here's a typical picture. This is the student team number five that finished in, uh, in, in, in May. And, um, well, they, they gave me this fancy flag with a MIST logo on it. And, uh, uh, and there's a mixture of some uh, 
future students that are participating this semester and the uh, and the team in question. Here, and of course, you see the the wooden sculpture of of, of the space shuttle that carried Christoph Fuglesang, Sweden's first astronaut, into space. This is, of course, in the aerospace building. This picture was taken. So we roughly have uh, uh, about fifteen students in each uh, in each uh, student student team, and um, and this semester there are yeah sixteen actually and. Six of them are volunteers. So, what do the students do? Well, they do they, uh, they do analysis work and design work on the system level. I'll show you some details on what they do. They contribute to make buy decisions. I mean, some stuff we well, most of the stuff we buy, some we make, and you have to make a decision which way you go. So that's to to, uh, to give a contribution to that. Build some parts in ha in house, and they're going to have to write a lot of onboarding ground software and eventually assemble, test, and operate the satellite once it gets into orbit. Um, there are a lot of experiments on board. Uh, so um, uh, these are, you know, x -ray, uh, an x-ray experiment, the piezoelectric linear motor, um, resuscitation of bacteria, propulsion system, radiation test experiment, memory error detection, and silicon carbide electronics in the imager. So, uh, well, these are some typical pictures of what people do in the current thermal analysis team, Praina and Mei Li. And this is attitude control analysis that has been done to the students to see that the satellite is roughly pointing towards Earth. Um, and this is an interesting uh, study of, of the power generation from, from the solar panels. See, uh, this solar panel shadows that. That's a tricky problem to figure out. So here's a, uh, a graph showing the... Um, uh, the output as a, as a function of time during one orbit from the various parts of the, uh, of the solar array. So this is a, a typical work done by students. And this is, uh, here is uh, Bjorn and Marcus uh, as assembling the uh, 3D printed uh, mock-up of the satellite, which is we needed to figure out how to run the cables. So um, that was done in May. So, what's, so what do students learn? Well, this is kind of stupid you're going to see now, so don't, don't laugh. Uh, what is the similarity between sausage and the project? We do who worked with might miss know this story, but anyway. What is, well, they both have a beginning and an end. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not completely, you know, um, uh, trivial, because what, what the project is, it's a temporary organization set up to perform a specific task. Yeah, and there's a big difference between a temporary organization and a, uh, you know, a fixed organization that's going on forever. They have a completely different way of, 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 of operating, actually. And this is important, which means a, a, a project has to be uh, has to be organized in a way where knowledge is preserved in a way that you don't really encounter in, in other enterprises. So um, that means that students learn about how to, how to document what they do, and, uh, and um, uh, uh, for example, and to, uh, that ev all tasks ha have to be organized according to something very boring called the work breakdown structure which uh, numbers everything done on the, on, on the project. Those are just some examples of, it, of what it means to, to learn what a project organization is. Then I have my pet ideas, and that is students get some important lessons, which are more on a, on a human level. And the, the, the two main things, the ethos of engineering, I call it, what it means to be an engineer. And the other is how to do teamwork in the real world. So what do I mean by the ethos of engineering? Well, it's also very straightforward. It's, you know, do more with less. That is, I think, the basic way an, an engineer should operate. Attention to detail in all phases of the project. You have to worry all the time. You, have, you wake up in the middle of the night and you worry. <laughs> Assumption is the root of all mistake. There is a much nastier version of this, which I should not repeat in front of an international audience. But you have to think all the time. Haven't you assumed something which is wrong? You have to always question your assumptions. And then, of course, it's a corollary of Murphy's Law. If it's not tested, it will fail. It's not, it may fail, it will fail. 
You can be absolutely sure it will fail if it's not tested. Uh, and then you have to document what you do. That means being professional. You just don't leave th scraps, important stuff on scraps of paper. And imp uh, so you have to, because if something goes wrong, you have to understand why. There's no hardware to look at. You've launched the stuff into space and something goes wrong. Well, what, what did you actually launch? You have to know exactly what it was. The as-built configuration it has to be drawings and photographs and inform exact information of what is up there because you can't mm -hmm. pull it down and look at it. So then we talk about teamwork in the real world. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, uh, all projects have, uh, have a schedule and they have to meet a, a deadline, which means that no people should not play schedule games. What do I mean by schedule games? Well, it's hiding be behind somebody else's delay. You know, if you say, well, I'm a bit late, but the, the guy over there is even later, you know, so maybe I could sort of hide behind that and don't, I won't tell anybody I'm late because this other guy is more late than I am. Wonderful opportunity to, to play schedule games. This is not allowed in Myst. Uh, if you're late, say so. And then, of course, this is to paraphrase President John F. Kennedy. Don't ask what your co co-worker can do for you. Ask what you can do for your co-worker. And uh, when I worked in a, in a professional space project, the Swedish Space Corporation, I remember a project meeting where uh, one of the project workers said that I woke up at three o'clock this morning, about this time of day, um, and uh, I thought about your problem. This person had then pointed at another project member, and he said, "And I know how to solve it." You know, somebody who, who wakes up at three o'clock in the morning and thinks about somebody else's problem and how to solve it. That's how a project should be run. That's the spirit that is important in a project team. So, this is what I try to instill as a foretaste of, of work in industry. So, remember, if it's not tested, it will fail. Agree, Gunnar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So this is actually the final slide. You wouldn't be, you would be surprised. But this is some statistics on where the students come from. These are the first mm, five student teams. And this is on the system level. We have students working on the various experiments that, uh, at KTH and other places. But this is in the system level team, which I have the pleasure of managing. So you see, that's where they come from. Uh, Sweden, of course, dominates. And there are a lot of students from India. EU, 10, and then the, the rest of the world, so to speak, a uh, total of 61. And then this is from which um, courses they take, uh, from electrical engineering dominates, aeros well, sorry, aerospace, of course, the biggest, and then there are the, the thesis, number of theses that we have, um, that have been done in the project. So, uh, well, it's actually the same, 61 on both, that's good, uh, so it matches. So it's kind of interesting that it's aerospace engineers from India that do this project. Well, it's not true, but it's those, those are the, the, some interesting statistics that they have um, uh, an interesting role here. And um, you can wonder why, but I think I know why. The, the um, students from various nationalities live together here, you know, in, in the, in, in, and uh, very close to each other and tell each other how fun it is to work on the MIST project. That's why. Uh, there are about 20 to 25 percent women in each uh, project team, and that's sort of close to uh, to the average um, of women in at KTH in those particular subjects. So I, uh, I'm not ashamed of that. I think it's pretty um, uh, pretty okay. It could be better, but it's um, it's, it's not horrible. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that is uh, the sum total of uh, what I'm going to say. So I'm going to finish with a very pretty uh, logo of the MIST, um, of the MIST project, which is actually uh, a student was able to solicit f for free from a, um, from a designer uh, in India who did this online. So, um, well, you see how it works. I, did, I have no role in designing it. By the way, there's an interesting, it's called the miniature student satellite. And some people say, what is it that is actually miniature? Is it the satellite or is it the students? 
<laughs> I can assure you that it is um, the the satellite. The students are, are are really giants, I would say, and getting this thing along. Uh, then, of course, the Germans joke about what "mist" means in German, but I will leave that for you to Google. Thank you very much.